Now, little more than 60 meters from the first grave, a second find is being investigated by leading American forensic experts. We found, we found. Locked away in the Yekaterinburg city morgue, the newly uncovered bones will be subject to the most intensive 21st century forensic analysis. Did all of the Russian royals come to a violent end at the hands of Bolshevik executioners? Or could the legends be true? Did two of Tsar Nicholas's children survive? Forensic anthropologist Anthony Falsetti and DNA expert Michael Koble are about to get their first look at the bones that may answer these intriguing questions once and for all. Under lock and key in the Yekaterinburg morgue, access to these potentially royal remains is tightly controlled. In the year 2000, the Romanovs were canonized as martyrs by the Russian Orthodox Church. If authenticated, these bones could become holy relics. Anthony Falsetti is no stranger to these halls. He was part of the original team assembled in the 1990s to investigate the first set of Romanov bones. The investigation and its findings proved highly controversial, sparking a very public row. Russian scientists used facial reconstruction techniques to claim that one of the bodies was that of Anastasia, but others were unconvinced. Still more troubling was the body count discrepancy. Two bodies are still missing, and it is a mystery. If two bodies were missing, was the entire grave unrelated to the Romanovs? There were accusations of political interference and rushed, rash conclusions. In the end, the Russian Orthodox Church rejected the DNA evidence as tainted and refused to acknowledge that the remains were in fact the Romanovs. But now this new find could change all that. And this time the team wants to avoid the storm of publicity that engulfed investigations in 1991. But the Romanov mystery is an enduring fascination. We arrive into the lab and there's a massive number of cameras and people doing interviews uh, while we're trying to look at the remains. The start of the latest investigation makes the evening news. But once the cameras have gone, a critical story emerges. Once the cameras are gone, we get down to work. And what I discover is that these 44 fragments, many were not going to be able to identify as being human. Perhaps they're not. There's just not enough material here. These shattered remains look nothing like the nearly complete skeletons found in 1991. Broken, almost unrecognizable. But careful inspection by expert eyes reveals the fragmentary remains are human. But exactly who are they the remains of? Could these be the bones of Alexei, Maria, or Anastasia? Or do they belong to someone else entirely? The mystery within the mystery is what happened to Anastasia. Did she escape? Or is she here? Right now, I can't tell whether I have two females, or a male and a female, or whether these fragments are part of the other bones that were already recovered. Handling and photographing what may be the bones of saints is a delicate matter. Each fragment must be handled with the greatest respect and sensitivity. Then, after intricate examination, a breakthrough. It doesn't look like much. It is a portion of the pelvis. Uh, it is our os cox. And as it turns out, it is from a female. We can deduce that by the sciatic notch 
in males it would be more narrow in females um, it is quite wide that is critical we know we have two people now we know that one of them is female a male and a female body parts from two individuals but are they the missing romanov children Anthony Falsetti and the forensic anthropologists will have to dig deeper. For Mike Coble and the DNA team, there's another problem. These bones show evidence of burning. Looking at the remains, I'm beginning to think this is going to be a very difficult case. When, when the bone is burned, there's a lot of heat generated, which is not very good for DNA. Take our sample from down here. Uh, two and a half, three centimeter cut. Michael Kogel selects fragments most likely to yield readable DNA. Minute pieces will be cut off and sent to his lab in America and to other researchers around the world for independent analysis. But teasing out the 90-year-old genes that may lie dormant in the fragments will take weeks, and the chances that the DNA has survived intact are slim. For the forensic team, a few pieces of badly damaged bone isn't much to go on. But in the town where the Romanov family met their end, there are more leads to pursue. Local archaeologist Sergei Pogoliov was one of the excavators who found the second lot of bones in 2007. He has kept and carefully stored evidence taken from the grave in the forest. Among the artifacts he's preserved are fragments of a wooden crate, quantities of ash and some pieces of pottery. Each is a clue to what might have happened when the remains were buried. The ash corroborates with burn marks found on the bones. A grim picture is beginning to materialize. What kind of container do you think? The pottery shards are perhaps the most compelling evidence. They match similar fragments found in the nearby grave uncovered in 1991. So these are the ones from 1991? Yeah. Other pieces of the puzzle will have to be found and put together correctly before a true picture can emerge of exactly what happened in the forest outside Yekaterinburg more than 90 years ago. The most important pieces to that puzzle. Three bullets. Exhumed from the grave, these projectiles may be the very bullets that killed the heir to the Romanov throne. If they match the bullets found in the nearby grave in 1991, a conclusive forensic connection could be made between the two graves. The bullets are taken for expert analysis. When fired from a gun, a bullet is scored with distinctive scratches as it travels through the barrel. These so-called bore markings are like fingerprints. The first of the three bullets found in the 2007 grave excavation is too damaged for analysis. But the other two have survived intact. Initial tests show the other two bullets have nearly identical bore marks, implying that the same kind of gun was used. We can determine that the bullets were shot from the same weapon, a Browning pistol. The type of weapon may have been identified, but the results have exposed yet another twist in the tale. These bullets are different in caliber than the ones found in 1991. The bullets don't match those found in the earlier grave, meaning a different gun had to have been used to kill those buried in the other grave nearby. We know that this gun is from the same time period, but we don't have a direct tie to the 91 finds. No link. A new and previously unknown weapon. 
If there's no hard evidence linking the graves to the same crime, then perhaps the remains in the latest grave belong to nameless victims and have nothing to do with the slaughter of the Romanov family. So far, forensic investigations haven't been able to link the graves or the remains found inside them. In Russia, the forensic investigator Antony Falsetti's trail is running cold. But the answer to the lost bone's identity and to what really happened to Anastasia and the rest of the Romanov children may be inside this box. These are the samples DNA expert Michael Koble selected back at the Yekaterinburg morgue. They've made the journey halfway around the world to the United States, sealed in contamination-proof containers. Other samples are on their way to Austria and other labs.